All right. <clears throat> so today we're going to be doing drawings. So here we've got it, and on the the V40-4 drive, I have a project called IDW Demo. You copy that one to your computer. It has some sample parts that you can Google or that we're going to use today. I'm going to, I'm going to show you, um, and then you can try them afterwards uh, to see how it works. <coughs> What we're going to do is we're going to start. One, two. Just drag the whole fold. Really. Yeah. template IDW that you can co just copy in your folder that has some of the settings correct that I want to use. But for now I'm just going to start a new one. Oh shoot, that's right. <clears throat> so you see it comes up for the title block. What size paper is this? Tell kind of by the size of the title block, because remember this part stays the same no matter what, what size paper it is. So that's big. Um, so you just right click on the sheet, go to edit sheet. Now we can name it. So if we're doing a project like this, we're going to have multiple sheets in one drawing. We're going to have one file with a bunch of sheets. And so I can actually name it. Assembly, exploded assembly, or whatever this base assembly, front. So I can name them by what it is. Um, I can change the paper size here. I'll maybe call that to be a B size. If I want to change the orientation, I can change the portrait or landscape. Usually we just want to leave the top block in the bottom right corner because that's standard. Um, down here, this exclude from count is that one of the benefits of putting them all in one file is that it actually counts the page numbers for you in the bottom. So down there, here there's a sheet, one of whatever. And so if you have them all in the same file, it makes that number correct. If you do them as separate files, then you have to go in and change each one. Um, but you can exclude some from the count so that it doesn't count them, or you can exclude some from printing. Um, so the, how that might be used is when I was doing sheet metal stuff, we do the flat pattern. It would make it full size on a sheet that we could export as a DXF. Um, and just it wouldn't have any dimension to just have the lines we just so we could export it. And we wouldn't want to print that page. Or if you had a, a notes page that was just for the people working on it, you could exclude that page or something like that. <coughs> or and if you do revisions, you can put it in the revision over here which will fill into the title block. I say OK, and it gets down there. <clears throat> down here in the title block, if I, if I right click here, and go to Edit Definition, you can see it's got a bunch of stuff listed. And this is that the fields from the I properties, so like title, Author, part number, those parts of things from the I properties are what, are what fills into here. And then on the template that I'll give you um, later, I'll, I'll, I have it kind of changed a little bit because if I look at this one, right click on it, edit text. Yep. How did you do that? You right click on it? I clicked on it, then I right clicked and edit text. And if you look at it, it says properties drawing here. Well, really what I want, would I want that from the model properties, right? That would be more useful than coming from the drawing properties. Because on the drawing properties, they're all going to be the same. That's one drawing file. So I delete that. Pick properties model. Title. And then this little X down there. And now that's going to be using the model properties.
And so I'll give you a template that has that changed on it um, and using the fields that I want it to use. Okay? And I'll give that to you guys today. So I'm going to finish sketch, say yes, and it finishes. How do we get that? Oh, a new sheet? Yeah. Just watch me right now. Okay. I'm going to give you a template that has that changed, so you're not going to have to do it. So when I want to make draw or put, put a part on here, I'm going to go up here to base. Because base is going to be my first view. I'm going to pick there to, to let me pick my file. So I'm going to pick this file. Say open. So if I kind of move this over, I can kind of move and put it where I want it to be. Over here I can tell it which view I want to put in first. This current is whichever view, whichever way it was saved last. Or if you have it open, how you're currently looking at that part. So if you can get, if you go to a certain rotation, you want to show something specific, like an intersection or something, you can zoom into that. And then you can make a new base view and say current, and it'll bring in that view into the drawing. And that stays, it doesn't change if you change your view in the drawing, or in the part. <clears throat> so pick your view. So we'll go front. Down here you can tell, do you want hidden lines? Do you want it just the outline? Or do you want it shaded? So you can do shaded with hidden. So usually on the, the multi-view, we don't do shaded. We'll do shaded on the on the isometric. <clears throat> if you want to give it a name, you can name it here. And here's where you can pick the scale. So you can decide how big you want it. Or you can just type it in. So if I wanted two to three, I can put that in or two or to two. You can just type it in and it'll change the scale to what, whatever you want. So once you're ready, just click and it'll put it in. And now it's taking you right into making your next view. So I can go, okay, I want a right view, I want a top view, I want that isometric, I want that isometric. When you're done picking which views you want, right click, create. And I can just, whenever you go over it and get the little red outline, that means you can pick that view. So if I just click here, I can drag that view over here. Drag that over a little bit. If I move that one, you can see the other views are going to move it with it. They're going to stay lined up. So just so the other two views you can move separately. No. No, the one put at the top. Yeah, these oh, two, the they're, they're isometric, so not aligned with it. Yeah. But orthographic views, auxiliary oh, views need to stay lined up, so they'll they'll move with it. So I could do that. Put that in. Looks good, right? Yeah. So when you when you when you made all the views. How, how, did, how did it separate those those views from those? Because you grabbed it and you, and you moved it. Because it knows isometrics it. don't need to be lined up. So the top view, bottom view, right view, that's yeah, isometric. Orthographics need to be lined up. Isometrics don't need to be lined up. <coughs> it knows what the standard is and it doesn't. Now, can you drag the top view or the side view out from that position? Yeah. You can only drag it. But you, we can't move it side to side because oh, okay. it's lined up with the base. Yeah. You got to move the base to move them yeah. too. Yeah. And so it depends on, it, in order to move it how it's lined up, you have to move the one that's lined up too. So let's say I want to do a section here. Delete that view. Now I can just go in up here to section. So you can see 
here I kind of went over the center to get my tracking. Let's say I want to go to this center. Go down. I'm going to do an offset section. So I'm going to have it cut there. Oops, that's not what I want. Is that section view correct? section view so I can get an asymmetric of a section that quick but no section lines I just double click on it go to display options hatching okay I got some hatching on so you can do sections you can do isometric to the section whatever you need to yeah. if I did a, a side view from here Still going to show a full part. It's not going to cut it when I do another side. But isometrics, it'll pull off and show you the section. Yeah. Um, now, you see how the section that you did mm -hmm. is set at an isometric view from upward angling down towards the middle. That's right. right. Yeah. Could you tilt it so it's flat so you can actually see that second hole? Or do you have to place it? Well, so for the isometric, they, it, you have to do. From each the corner. So you can't just do like no. a flat that's tilted slightly so you can see. No, if you wanted to do that, you'd have to actually cut the part uh -huh. and then paste that in. Yeah, you'd have to do a, a state of the part, do a current view of it. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, just but you can. I was just wondering. You can do an isometric or an isometric though. There's an isometric. So I go to the isometric and I do another isometric here. Uh -huh. But then that's not a real isometric, but if that's what you need to show that. But you can see it on these two, so isometric doesn't really doesn't do much for it. So a real isometric is a 60, 60, 30? No, 30 and 30. 30 and 30? 30 and 30. 30 degrees, 30 degrees. So there's that one. <clears throat> part on this. For another part of the project. I'm just going to right click over here in the white. New sheet. How did you get a sheet on the browser? What did I just do? I missed it. <coughs> click the white. Right. I just right said click it. I, clicked, I right clicked here. Right click on New the sheet. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. On the browser. Yeah, two seconds ago. Base. Pick my part. So I'll do this part, open it. Put it there. Sure get a side view there. Now I want to do an auxiliary. Go to auxiliary. Pick the view that I go I want to go from. Now it asks me to pick the line, so I want to pick this line. That's the one that defines the angle. Helps go off this way. Click, there it is. Okay. Questions? And you can 
see on the title, it's changing for the different parts. I didn't have to put it in, it filled it in for me. Right click, new sheet, base view. Is that the best way to do that part? Can I see those holes really? In the right now. What? what? What did you say? You can break the long part. Yeah. On a break. <clears throat> so, break right here. Mm -hmm. I go to break. And I pick on that view. I can pick the section I want to take out. Yep. And so, we go, this is the one I put in first. I double click on it, change the scale, say OK. It changes both views. Because this one's locked to this. It has to stay the same scale, has to stay lined up. I change the base, it changes that also. So now I just made that four times as big. We can still put in the dimensions and things, which we'll do next. Um, <clears throat> but also, some of these other ones. Um, we do detail views. I think I'm right. If I do a detail, pick the view, center, how big my detail circle is, and then where I want the view. If you have something small you want to detail, you can do that. <coughs> Inside part. Inside. Yeah, we're going to just kind of break off this part so we can see a section right in that area. So to do a breakout, you have to have a sketch of where you want it to break out. So this is the important part. You have to pick on the view that you want to add the breakout to, and then come up here and hit Create Sketch. If you hit Create Sketch when you don't do that, it won't work. Or if you pick on the other view and do it, it's not going to work. You have to pick on the view that you want to sketch on and go to create sketch. And then we'll just do a spline. Now this part is really not that big, but it, the actual word the spline is, that controls where it's going to break. So if you had a bigger section, like if I wanted to break out here, I could actually do my, my wavy line there. Can you use like this the line command? No, use the spline. It's got to use spline. And you have to click back on that first point to close it. Okay. Finish. Now I'll do a breakout. Pick that view. Now we want to know how deep to do the breakout. So if I want to break out through that hole, how can I? I can tell it a depth here. Or I can also do, right now it's wanting from point. So if I just pick on that line, isn't that line halfway through the hole? Yep. So okay. Say okay. Now I have my breakout. Okay. Um, this crop right here, if I do it. Draw a rectangle. I want to get part of the view. So if I wanted that part of it, I could do that. I don't know why I did that on this one, but on. Um, On some pieces you might do that. You might only want to show a quarter of it. You can, you can crop out the rest of it. So, questions on creating views. All right.
So go ahead, create those views, um, open up that 